Hi, I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the I Bible School. We're talking about Holy Ghost ministry, and we're coming up on lesson number 41. So stay with us. All right, let's get right to it. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit in the local church and how these gifts function and operate. And uh, one thing we want to be aware of is a scripture found in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 11. And uh, the verse goes like this. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now you want to mark that uh, phrase at the end of the sentence, as he will. The gifts of the Spirit operate as the Holy Spirit wills. Now this can be a benefit, obviously, but uh, it also can hinder us if we don't properly understand this scripture. We uh, want to uh, we want to be aware that the word and the spirit must always agree. And if you're knowledgeable of the word, uh, then you'll know where and when and what the Holy Spirit wants to do. It's very important that you have some knowledge. In fact, that's what Paul said at the beginning of the chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. He doesn't want us to be ignorant about these things. And uh, the knowledge we receive concerning the gifts of the Spirit uh, come directly from the Bible, the Word of God. So let's uh, look in John chapter 16, because I, I want us to see that the Spirit of God agrees with the Word of God. Starting in verse 12 here, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Albeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So we see here that uh, the Spirit of God is working in conjunction with Jesus himself, and Jesus is the living word. That's who Jesus is. He's the bread from heaven. Uh, praise God for it. God wants us to know the things concerning the gifts of the Spirit. And as I quoted earlier, let me read it from 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, concerning these things, the gifts of the Spirit, and Paul goes into great detail in chapter 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians. And uh, he begins here in verse 37, and he says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, He says, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Now, that's pretty strong language, you know. Um, I don't know uh, of but uh, one or two instances in the New Testament where, where <coughs> even the word commandments is used, uh, especially in the epistles. Now, Jesus used it, uh, speaking of the great commandment. Uh, the commandment to hear God and to love God. But uh, this is significant that Paul uses this word. He says, these things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And in other words, he said, I've given you the knowledge that I have concerning the gifts of the Spirit. And as you search the scriptures, on the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, uh, you can begin to see what the Bible has to say about it. We see in uh, the ministry of Moses, uh, even Joshua, and uh, 
uh, the ministry of Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament and, and some of the other prophets, we see example after example of, uh, of really all seven of the gifts of the Spirit that were utilized in the Old Testament. The only ones that weren't utilized in the Old Testament were divers' tongues and the interpretation of tongues, as far as we know. Um, Jesus prophesied in John or Mark 16 and verse 17, these signs shall follow them that believe, and he mentions the gift of tongues. But uh, uh, he, uh, we, we gain knowledge from the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, and the ministry of Jesus in the Gospels. We gain knowledge of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, but he says, he, he goes on and says here, But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak in, speak with tongues. Now, that's significant too, because if, uh, G, if Paul tells us to forbid not to speak with tongues, then the conclusion is that tongues ought to be spoken privately and uh, personally, and also should be welcome in the public assembly. Praise God, there have been groups uh, today that have limited or forbidden tongues uh, in churches, and some have even tried to forbid it among their workers, ministers, and missionaries privately. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if God fills you with the Holy Ghost, uh, he can't unfill you. I mean, you can, you know, maybe not utilize it and, and uh, not uh, obey the scripture. But the fact of the matter is, the Bible has already told us, forbid not to speak with tongues. He's not talking about uh, foreign languages. He's not talking about learning Spanish or French or um, Chinese. He's talking about the gift of tongues that is mentioned uh, throughout the New Testament. So he goes on and he finishes with this verse, let all things be done decently and in order. Uh, the primary reason that chapter 14 was, was written so that not only would we operate and function in the gifts of the Spirit and include them in our church service, but that we would operate and function with good order. Now, all nine of the gifts of the Spirit operate as the Lord wills. Let's read that scripture again in uh, 1 Corinthians twelve eleven. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit. He had just, uh, uh, just previously, he had just gotten done reading uh, all of the nine manifestations of uh, or writing all of the nine manifestations of the Spirit. He went down through it, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, uh, the working of miracles, the gifts of healings, the um, uh, diver, uh, or discerning of spirits, diver's tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Uh, he gave us all these gifts, gift of faith. I think I mentioned that. But uh, anyway, he uh, gave us all of these gifts. And then he tells us, he says that uh, these sh should all operate as the Spirit wills. And they do operate as the Spirit wills. Notice, number one, that all the gifts work. They operate and they show forth themselves. Uh, all the gifts uh, by the, uh, operate by the one and the self-same Holy Spirit, the one and only. Amen. These gifts are not to operate by any other spirit other than by the Holy Spirit. Uh, these gifts operate, uh, and we can divide them in uh, parts or cut them into portions to separate and distribute. Uh, we're talking about um, the gifts of the Spirit. He separates. He divides. He uh, distributes these gifts. All these 
uh, worketh, that one of the self same spirit, dividing, I like that, uh, he divides them, amen, divides them or cuts them into portions, he separates and distributes the gifts, and we see to every man, now who would that be, to whosoever will, if you strongly desire these gifts of the spirit, and then begin to step out in faith and use the gifts of the Spirit, God's going to use any individual that uh, that uh, goes after these gifts, dividing to every man severally as he will, to whosoever will, to those coveting the best gifts, to those pursuing love and compassion. Uh, different gifts accompanying different offices, and we've gone over that some, but uh, an apostle will have certain tools and abilities. An evangelist, a prophet, will have certain tools and abilities. And then, of course, even teachers and pastors will uh, and can operate and function in any number of the gifts. You might have a pastor that's, that's uh, very uh, skilled and, and used mightily in a word of knowledge or uh, even prophecy. Uh, you might have pastors who operate in diverse tongues with interpretation of tongues, but he divides severally to every man as he wills. Praise God. So um, what does that mean? It means uh, according to his will, whatever he wills. Uh, he he determines um, what gifts operate. He determines who is used by those gifts and how they operate, when they operate, and where they operate. So uh, when we say they, the gifts operate as he wills, it's what he wills, who he wills to use how he wills to use them, when he wills and where he wills to use them. Now, when we look at this phrase, as he will, it's his will is that the gifts operate and function. We, we see that in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. Paul finishes chapter 12 by saying, uh, covet earnestly the best gifts. And uh, he, you know, it's obvious that God wants these gifts to operate. Why? Because these gifts meet the needs of people. These gifts are miraculous and supernatural. They meet the needs of people. Uh, so his will is that the gifts operate and function. Uh, when he says, as he will, he chooses which gifts are to operate, through whom, and uh, and where. Uh, he chooses uh, how they operate. He chooses when they operate. And he chooses where they operate. So when we see this phrase, as he will, his will is that the gifts operate and function. He chooses what gifts operate. He chooses through whom the gifts operate. He chooses how they operate. He chooses when they operate, and he chooses where they operate. Uh, now, when we look at the gifts of the Spirit, you've got to understand this, this aspect. If you don't, you'll never have the gifts operate and function the way they ought to. Uh, there is a God side and a man side when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit. God's side is he provides the gifts and he distributes the gifts. He gives the unction and the anointing for the gifts. And really, he's given us the knowledge and insight uh, into these gifts. The man's side is we become knowledgeable of the gifts. We've got to make an effort to, to know about these things. We've got to educate our thing, uh, ourselves when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit. You know, one thing that Paul told Timothy was uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let me read it. Uh, it's a very familiar verse to to any 
minister. But uh, Paul simply said this. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, this study is not just so we can be good preachers. Certainly, study is going to help to be uh, to be a preacher. But the study is so that we can be ministers, so that we can operate and function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So uh, we've got to become knowledgeable of these gifts. They they won't operate without knowledge. And, uh, of course, 1 Corinthians 12 mentions that. Uh, we must desire the gifts of the Spirit. If we don't desire them, if we don't want them, uh, don't be concerned about them coming around because they won't. Uh, God wants us to want these gifts. And the Holy Spirit moves towards uh, desire. You could almost uh, say it this way, that prayer, that desire creates a vacuum that draws in the knowledge and power and presence of God. But uh, we must be knowledgeable of the gifts. We've got to desire the gifts. Um, and we must operate faith for the gifts. We, we must move towards these things in faith. And uh, it's uh, you say, what is faith? And in a simplistic form, faith is acting on what the Bible says. And the Bible says that these gifts are given to every man. So we must exercise our faith for the gifts. And then finally, 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says, covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And Paul moves into chapter 13, talking about charity and compassion, the, the love of God. And uh, as we've stated pre previously, <coughs> it's one thing to feel badly when someone's going through a difficult time. It's, uh, it's one thing to feel for that person. You know, we're talking about sympathy and empathy. Uh, but it's only agape, it's only compassion that will move in and meet the need. And compassion works in conjunction with the gifts of the Spirit. Compassion will meet needs. We see throughout the ministry of Jesus, he was moved with compassion and healed their sick. He was moved with compassion and taught the word. He was moved with compassion and miracles were wrought. Uh, food was multiplied. Fish and bread were multiplied. And uh, we see this throughout the New Testament that compassion was a major uh, emphasis in the ministry of Jesus. And it must be a major emphasis in our lives. It's compassion that causes us to reach out and share the gospel with others. So, uh, praise God, we ought to be moved with compassion to meet the needs of human humanity. Um, Paul said, charity is the greatest. He says, now abideth faith, hope, and love, ha faith, hope, and charity, and uh, charity is the greatest. All nine gifts are distributed to and through the fivefold ministry. Now, the gifts can operate through uh, uh, through individual Christians as they desire them and as they need them. But uh, Paul goes into great detail and shows us that there is a variety of ministry. Uh, Ephesians chapter four and verse eleven breaks it down to a fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And this is the leadership that's set up in the church. All these offices, ministry offices, operate with particular tools. So we would expect, for instance, an evangelist to have power gifts. We would expect a prophet to prophesy. 
and have revelation gifts. And we would uh, expect pastors and teachers to minister in particular gifts. Apostles to have the uh, working of miracles, for instance. So all these gifts operate through the fivefold ministry. And uh, let me just uh, just bring this to remembrance that the uh, church is not based upon one particular ministry office. You know, one of just being frustrated because it seemed like uh, pastors didn't need him and didn't need other ministries. And he made the statement, he says, the fivefold ministry is not pastor, 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 pastor. And I would concur with that. We, if we're going to build a, a healthy church, a healthy church is built upon a variety of ministry. We, we must have the apostle in to our churches and expose his ministry to the people. We must have the prophet's ministry and the evangelist and the teacher. And it's not just uh, having, you know, I know many times pastors are comfortable having other pastors because pastors, it's, an, it's not an easy job. You've got to learn to work with people and not offend people and be very patient and easy with people. But that's not always the prophet's ministry. That's not always the evangelist's approach. Uh, and sometimes uh, pastors may have an issue with the way an evangelist presents his ministry. But keep in mind, there are people and individuals that will respond to that evangelist in a way that they would never respond to a pastor and things can get fixed and healed and and there's benefit that's brought to the church through a prophet's ministry or through a, an apostle or evangelist ministry that uh, could never be brought by a pastor. You say, oh, well, uh, uh, you're putting down the pastor's ministry. No, I'm not because uh, an evangelist is never going to be able to accomplish and do what a pastor does. And we have many evangelists pastoring churches. And you can see the result of that. They have a, uh, a large congregation, but they have a large back door too. People don't stay around to sit under a, a, a an evangelist ministry very long. You know, some prophets pastor churches. And uh, they have the holiest group in town, but they have the smallest group in town. And then you have uh, pastors who uh, do a good job. And, and even those that will invite the variety of ministry into their churches. So that's really what we want. Uh, there ought to be uh, uh, a leadership based upon that fivefold ministry. Now, they may not be resident within that church but they can flow out from a church. And uh, normally you've got to have people coming in from the outside to add benefit because there is a benefit from having a minister in that comes with a different perspective that doesn't uh, parrot the pastor and what he's saying necessarily, but he comes in with a message to bless and minister and edify that particular body. And there is a benefit from someone coming from the outside with a different approach, with a different perspective. Uh, I've had pastors mention, well, we've got 20 people in our church that can do what the evangelist does. Really, uh, you might have 20 parrots, you might have 20 people saying what you say, but you don't have a genuine uh, evangelist, even if there is an evangelist that flows out from there, he's got to, he's, he's got a different uh, approach in his own home church because he knows that church. So what, uh, what we're saying is we need to see the body of Christ in a bigger way. And that body consists of variety of ministry that we ought to bring into our local church and benefit that local church. Praise God. So, um, 
And these gifts, these fivefold ministry, it represents the theology of the body of Christ. And again, let me say, um, these are distributed to those who believe and desire and need the gifts to operate. Uh, and remember, compassion meets the needs of people. Praise God. We're going to stop here and we're going to continue on uh, speaking of the gifts operate as he wills. So come back for lesson number 42. Praise God. God bless you.